Hey guys, Brian Haywood here. Welcome back to my Beards and Banjos YouTube channel where we help you grow your best beard possible. Thank you for joining me. And in today's video, we are going to do something that strikes fear in so many beardsmen out there. We're going to trim our own beards. Um, for some reason, I don't know if it's because it's so prominent, it's your, you know, your beard, you've taken care of it, you've grown it out, um, you care about it more than other things, maybe because it's new, uh, but so many guys just really have a, a big fear of trimming their beard. Um, so I actually enjoy it. I do it about every three weeks. I've found my style and what works for me. I kind of fell down the rabbit hole of, um, I'm a process guy, I'm a, I'm a math teacher, I need to know how things work and why they work. So I really investigated that through a lot of videos, um, beard trim videos, um, the, the beard brand videos from in the barber shops are great because the barber actually talks through what he's doing. So I've really enjoyed those. And I've helped a lot of guys here in the community um, that, that have just given them advice about their, their shapes or uh, help them actually go through the, the trimming process themselves. So don't be afraid to do it. Once you get a little more experience, uh, you will not want anybody else touching your beard because nobody knows your beard better than you do. Uh, you'll know exactly what, to, what you want to do and exactly how to do it. But it does take a little bit of time. You kind of have to, to work through the kinks and make a few little mistakes but I think if you're careful you won't have anything that you you have to uh, that you won't be able to recover from so I actually did the beard trim the day's Wednesday I did it on Saturday I filmed it set up the camera and the lights up as best I could uh, there's always a big echo in there so instead of me walking you through it I've done live beard trims before I've done ones where I, I kind of stop and talk and through talk you through the process we're gonna kind of do it like a reaction video I'm gonna give you a live commentary as I go back and watch that uh, particular video. So let's get into it, see how that goes. Hopefully I can give you uh, some words of wisdom or inspiration for you there. So uh, here we go. So we've got the uh, everything all set up. And the first thing we're gonna do is I've got a really wide pick. Um, my beard is dry. I went through my normal routine in the morning and this is like at six, seven hours later. Um, you want to make sure you've got a dry beard because I'm gonna be using clippers. You use clippers on dry beard and dry hair. All right, so uh, you see me go through that with the uh, pick. And now I've got a brush that's got some um, some bores here underneath, so that actually helps pull out the bottom of my beard a little bit. You can use some heat, but you wanna be careful about pulling out this part underneath that's really curly, your underbeard. If you pull that out too much and you cut off too much, it's gonna um, uh, sh shrink back up once you wash it. So you wanna be very careful about that. You wanna keep everything nice as full as you can. Got a little boar's hair brush. I always go over the, the surface of my beard whenever I'm styling it or, or trimming it. Uh, and you have to keep combing it, combing it out. You don't want to over comb it because it does put static in your beard and might make it unnaturally poofy. And then if you're trying to uh, round everything off, then you may uh, go into it too far. So now I'm going in with the first cut with my Brio. You see, I'm taking off a good chunk. That's over half an inch uh, that I'm going in. And this is without a guard and it may look like I'm going straight back. I'm actually going down at about a 45, 30 to 45 degree angle. So what, what ends up happening is I'm getting that initial line working around one side and then going back underneath and getting my underbeard. I'm, I don't have a very strong underbeard. So really most of that's kind of like a horseshoe for me. So uh, it doesn't take much for me to get the underneath part. And then what I'll go back and do right here is I want it but beveled. Uh, I want my beard to look a little bit rounded because if you come in with a wedge shape, like a, like a wedge of cheese, and that grows out just the, the outside part and it's gonna get transparent and a lot uh, and more um, faster than it would if it's uh, rounded. So that's what I'm doing there. So I'm rounding the front. So the part in the very front is a little bit shorter. And then I've got the thickness of my underbeard uh, for support. And that usually is the part that grows the fastest right here in the front and then the back two corners is the part that grows the fastest on, on me. So now I'm working around to the other side. And you'll see me, I'll use both hands. So you have to have a pretty steady hand. Uh, I'm using my left hand there, I am a lefty. So you see my wedding ring there. But there will be times where I'll switch around and use my right hand a little bit. And I'm being careful with the underbeard. And you'll see the shape I'm going for there. It's, um, it's a, a 
pretty manicured look to it, but um, it's got a little bit of roundness to it. And I do this about every three weeks, okay? Um, and I've been doing that for three years at this point. So the more you do it, the better off you'll be and you'll kind of find what works for your beard and the tools that work. By the way, I do I have a, 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 all links to all of these tools and right below. I really love those Brio Beardscape trimmers because they're, they're so quiet. You can hear every uh, hair that you cut. Always keep going back and reassessing. That's pretty good for the first cut. And you know, if I'm, you're trying to get more length on it, then I would just cut the bottom of that beard and, and let the rest of it go. Um, but for me, I'm looking for a little bit more of a tighter look around the sides and the, the uh, sideburn area. So we're just getting started. So combing it out a little bit more. You have to kind of keep reassessing. You don't want to obsess over it or to keep trim or keep uh, combing over and over but you're always coming out at least once just to see what pops out on you. Uh, missed the little spot right there. And by the way, this uh, you can always reassess after you uh, wash your beard. So after you wash your beard, everything, you get a reset on it, uh, things are gonna lay a little bit differently and you'll have some more hairs that might pop out. Uh, you can kind of get those, and that's usually about it. Um, except for the mustache. The mustache you kind of reassess all the time. Yeah, my and, and then the part on my neck, um, you could just let that go completely natural. For me, it just kind of aggravates me, and it just sits right there. It doesn't really contribute any to the shape of my beard. So I get rid of a lot of those hairs. And like I said, my underbeard uh, and the stuff on my neck does not grow down very far. So I don't have to worry about doing a lot in there. As some guys do. Just checking the shape. I do have a hand mirror that I can put on one side to use as I'm looking in the big mirror, which helps me a lot. And then I always have to reassess these corners, all right, because what happens for me is the front grows and then these corners grow. And if I'm not careful, it'll get like a reverse uh, or a little reverse arc there, which I don't want. So I cut the front, uh, go around the sides, and then I have to reassess these uh, little corners there, your little wings. And I'll go back and get a little bit more. It's always hard to see that back line. That hand mirror will help you a little bit as well. That's one thing I think that going to a barber actually helps because they can see everything better. I mean, you can get pictures of it. You can do a video and kind of do a whole panorama, yet you still can't really see what you're doing very well. I've tried it where I'm looking in mirrors, like two mirrors at the same time, and it just throws off your equilibrium because your things move the wrong direction. If you're not careful, you'll make a mistake. If you'll notice what I do there is I, I, I lift my head forward and I can do some more like beveling. I can see what those hairs in the very front and take those off. It gives me a little bit more of that rounded shape. It keeps my beard nice and thick so when it grows out, it, I don't have transparency as quickly. And then I have to keep taking my glasses on and off. But now we're going to look at the sideburn area, and I'm in between haircuts. If I had just gotten a haircut, which I often do when I do a beard trim, I would have to do more work on the sideburn area because I usually go down to a one. I've also been trying to grow out uh, the top of my sideburns. I saw that on a video. Uh, I don't really like it, so I'm going to take, take the top of those down a little bit more, but not go down too far. Because what can happen is you can get a bell shape. It can, you can have a re reverse arc this way. So I kind of want mine to go straight down and then uh, curve in at the very bottom for the rounded shape. So I put the guard on. So this was a 12 uh, on the Brio. And I'll go back in a minute and flip it around and go down to a nine. Uh, if I had just gotten a haircut, I would go down to like a six or, yeah, I think a six, the next one down. And then I'm uh, about a week away from a haircut. So what I'll do is I'll, um, 
I'll try to edge out with the scissors right around my ears. And that'll sharpen everything up just a little bit. And you can get a little more time in between haircuts if you really clean up your sideburn area and right around your ears. Depends on your hairstyle and what, what you've got going on. But that's this is what works for me with a shorter uh, haircut. Just to get a nice blend right there. Now flipping that around, so going down to the six next, because I've got a uh, bone right here, like this part of your orbital bone or something right outside of my ears. That's where I, the, the widest point is for me. So I want my hair to be the shortest right there. So that's what I'm doing. So getting that just a little bit shorter on that about quarter of an inch area. And the other thing you can do is note, if you notice those clippers there, I had it angled out as I went around my ear. So I'll give you a little bit of a quick taper around your ear. Yeah, I'm not happy with that. <laughs> but as I'm looking at it now, it's, I mean, it looks perfectly fine. But when you're your own worst critic and you're looking at it live, you see all those little hairs and the every little patch of puffiness. All right, so now here's an advanced tapering idea. So you can take your, uh, this is a clipper comb, so it's flat, so some sort of flat comb. And then figure out where you're going. I'm going right... Um, a little bit below mid ear about where my earlobe attaches and I'm tapering stuff above that and notice I've got that and at an angle so instead of having to use different clippers and keep going higher different guards on your clipper you can just do a quick taper uh, with your comb right you have to be careful that um, comb has a width of a one guard so if you just put it flat you're going to have stuff too short and then once again, that back line, I usually go with scissors just straight up and that gets any uh, little random hairs that are uh, going backwards. Sometimes those will aggravate your ears if they're too long. And now the other side, you can see you kind of push in on your skin there and that uh, gives you a line. And then you can use your fingers if you need to. Mine wasn't cooperating very much, but this will give you a really good shot right here. Look at that taper. So you see that angle on the comb? And none of that hair right there is contributing to the shape of my beard below it. All right, so it's still gonna be hair there, but it's gonna be tapered, and that's gonna lay uh, nice and flat for me. I've got wavy hair anyway, so when that part gets too long, it starts to really have some waves, and it'll start to get in, uh, on my ears and stuff. And once again, if you are trying for more length, you're growing out for the first time, you probably want to, don't want to do as much tapering. You just do it at the very, very top. Make sure it blends into your hair okay. And then after that, you just let it grow. And this is the other thing that you don't want to do if you are growing for length and you're trying to see what you're working with. And that's the, uh, you know, it can be a little bit of a controversy thing about this um, hedge trimming, if you will. Now, I'm doing it without a guard, but... You can hear I'm barely taking anything off. So just like I've shaped the bottom of my beard, I'm doing the same thing around the side. So just taking off a few of the random hairs. And I don't want to overdo this. I'm just doing it a little bit because when I wash my beard and it, dry, it draws up, I'll have different hairs that pop up. And some of these hairs um, might have split ends or they might not. They might have fallen out earlier and they're regrowing and eventually they'll get down to the bottom but I'm going for more of a tapered look anyway. So I, do, I can go across the face of my beard and take off just a few of those stragglers. Makes me feel, feel better about my look, so that's the way I do things. And I have pretty thick growth on my cheeks. If you've got really thin growth on your cheeks, then you probably don't need to do that at all. You can just work on the bottom of your beard. My under beard is weak and my cheek is pretty strong. Some guys, it's the opposite way. And there I am on that side, working that line, back line with the scissors, trying to catch any more of those um, straggler hairs. <coughs> All right, so now I'm working on the uh, chin, uh, what's this thing called? Soul patch area, right? So I'm put on, I think I put back on the 12 guard. And I don't do this every time, about every other time, because if I let this go forever and ever, these hairs get a little bit, um, you know, they start going like this and not really going into the rest of my beard. So what I do is I, I actually stick my tongue there, kind of stick it out, 
and then I go uh, kind of down out in an angle and it'll just catch the, the ones at the very end of my sole patch area and then it still blends in. So like I said, I don't do that every time, but sometimes it gets a little bit overgrown and they get a little bit wiry and they have minds of their own. So now I'm taking a look at that big old mustache. Oh, I combed it out earlier. Now I am uh, just taking a few more stragglers off with the scissors. You got more control with the scissors. And I don't do that very much because you can fuss around with that all day and then you uh, wash your beard and you got a whole nother set of issues, hairs that pop out. Neat little brush there uh, that I got, it's a little travel brush. But if you've got a separate mustache, you need to, to kind of pull your mustache up and comb the hairs down underneath it. And that little brush helps with that. I'll have a, a link in the description. And now on the mustache, I just combed it straight down. And then if you'll notice, I kind of blow some air in my cheeks, puff it up like chip muff cheeks, and it makes it stick out a little bit more. It makes it easier to deal with without catching any of the hairs of your beard. Just get the mustache hairs there. And as I go up, I kind of angle and arc it in the middle and go up and have a little fish tail in it. If you've never tried growing out your mustache, try growing it out, guys. If you get it, get it out there and then you style it and figure out what works for you. I have zero issues with my mustache. All right. You get used to it and then it really doesn't get in my mouth anymore because I know how to shape stuff. Same thing with my beard, right? Once I've, I've, I can shape my beard by trimming it, that means I'll have to use less product. I'll have to use less heat. I don't use heat on my mustache. I don't use mustache wax anymore. I just comb it. <laughs> there you go. So now I'm cutting off some of the tails because I don't want it. I don't like big handlebars or anything. Uh, some barbers will kind of roll it up and make it really tight and then snip it off that way. I found for me now it works better if I have it in place because um, what I do is make one cut and then I have to uh, like shape the top of it a little bit. There I am going for the fishtail in the middle. And one side of my mustache, every all the hair wants to go to one side and the other side it doesn't. We'll have to fight one side, so I have to trim one side of it a little bit differently than the other. So there I am with the, the uh, one of the tails. So I cut straight up and then I have to arc and get the top of it. If you go back and look at the before and after, you can't really tell a whole lot of difference. But you saw how, what, how much I took off my beard, right? I mean, it was at least a, a half an inch, if not more. I realized I didn't catch quite all of that tail, so I went back and caught it there. There it went. And you don't want to go back and forth too many times. You kind of check it once, and then you just go on. And if you're trying to keep a separate mustache, one of the keys is to uh, hold your mustache up and then trim a little bit around it. And that'll change the shape of your beard a little bit. You won't get the full stuff through here as much. But it'll definitely keep your mustache separate. And that's the, uh, I like that look on me because I've got some weaker spots uh, right on it, uh, right next to my mustache. And there I am catching a couple of the random stray hairs around the perimeter of the uh, mustache. I think I'm good with that. And the last step is to work on your cheek line. And there's um, there are tools that you can use. You can use the, the brink that I did a video on. Works really well if you're trying to establish a totally new line and use a barber pencil. Uh, on that but also um, you got options like you can use different things you can use razors you can use straight razors a lot of times I just use a little slim twin disposable razor like on a weekly basis and kind of come because I like a, a little bit of an arc I've actually grown my um, my cheek line up just a little bit because when I went back to school full time uh, I had to wear a mask all day and I thought I was going to have to get rid of my mustache my big mustache go down to like more of a normal shaped mustache I even contemplated um, doing a going down to a clipper beard and if I went down to a clipper beard I wanted as much real estate as I could get so I actually grew that up a little bit and I actually caught myself right there 
I had everything covered up. I couldn't use any water <laughs> because of the tripod and the cords and all that kind of stuff. So um, I had to do it dry. So I just used a little pre-shave oil. And I, when I did, uh, did that side, it got up a little too high and it was in a dry spot and it just caught a little bit. So I didn't do too much bleeding, but I could feel it. I was like, uh oh, I bleed for you guys to make the content. Just a little boo-boo, which wouldn't happen if I didn't have the camera rolling. I'm not great with the straight razor, and I don't have to be too particular because I don't have a super strong defined cheek line. I mean, you can tell it's there, but because my hair is a little bit lighter and my growth, I don't I don't really worry about going down way far and, and wanting everything super crisp. So I've been playing around with the straight razor, trying to get the hang of it. I can do it, but notice I'm using both hands. You have to flip everything around. Um, it's probably a whole lot easier just to go without doing the straight razor. You guys do the straight razor? Let me know. And then, depends on what I'm doing, most of the time I jump in the shower after that. Because I got a bunch of hair on my neck. All right, so that was it. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, if I'm not going to jump in the shower, I'll go ahead and put some uh, beard oil, beard butter on. Uh, but go through all of that afterwards. And I didn't do too much after that, but most of the time over the next 24 hours, you may have to do a little bit here and there, and then you just go with it. But uh, I enjoy that process. Now, I don't always enjoy it trying to do it in front of the camera, uh, but I do enjoy the, the beard uh, trims, watching beard trims, seeing the different shapes that work for people. So if you uh, have any questions or comments, please let me know. Uh, I'll be glad to give, uh, to give you any advice that I can. You can always send me a message on Instagram as well. Um, don't be afraid to trim the beard. It grows back if you make a little boo-boo. And if you make a little boo-boo, nobody else is going to know anyway. But you want to be in charge of your beard. You don't want to put it in somebody else's hands unless you trust them and you can establish that relationship. It's kind of a different thing. But I think every guy should kind of investigate the time. But when you investigate the time to uh, learn how to trim your beard, I think you're going to learn a lot about that, about what shapes you might enjoy and some different things you can try uh, in the future. I've kind of settled in on uh, this particular shape works for me uh, and I change it up occasionally but I don't change it up as much as most people this is kind of where I'm going to be for the next foreseeable future but anyway I hope you guys enjoyed the video got a little food for thought got a few tips and tricks and as always I appreciate you guys watching and we'll see you on the next video